I see my dad. And it's worth noting that this that at this point it's it's the middle of winter. I think it's like February or something. So he's in his overcoat and he's still wearing his suit from work and all and you know everyone else is like in denim and leather and you know <laughs> spiked hair and mohawks and stuff. And he <laughs> you know I see him and I'm like, "Dad, what are you what are you doing in line? I I told, you know, I told you that that you're on I put you on the guest list. All you have to do is go up to the door, tell them tell them your name and and you know, they'll check your name off the list and they'll let you in. You know, you don't have to worry about it." He goes, "It's like, "Oh, I I couldn't get in front of all these people in line, you know, these people are waiting in line. I can't get in front of them." And these two guys are standing in front of him in line and like one of them has a mohawk. And they turn around, they, they look at him, they go, wow, you're Kenny's dad? That's really cool. And then, and he kind of like, he's kind of, t- he's kind of taken aback. He's all of a sudden, you know, typically I'm known as, in his world, I'm known as his son. But here, you know, all of a sudden he's Kenny's dad, right? <laughs> and then next thing you know, one, you know, the other guy that's, that's in front of him says, yeah, man, you should you should really take him up on this offer because we're way back here in line. We're not even sure if we're going to get in. So, you know, at which point he sort of worked his way um, up the line. I, you know, I watched him work his way up the line as I'm working my way down the line, continuing to thank people for coming out. And, you know, I get in, I, you know, after I finish doing that, I go back inside and these two friends of mine go, I think you need to know something. I go, Whoa, what's that? They go, they go, we have moved your dad up to the sound booth, okay? And the way the club was constructed was, you know, you had the stage, you had the floor area, and then you had the sound booth was sort of on an, on an upper level, on like a second story level, you know, so, that it, was, so it was out of the way of, ever, of everything. And you had really good sight lines up from the sound booth, so you could really see what was going on on stage really well. And I go, okay, that's great. I'm glad you got him up there. They go, no, you don't understand. The moment he got in, the moment he got into the club, he put himself right in front of the stage, and you know we had to explain to him you really shouldn't stand there during this show. And you know, he's you know it was all we could do to get him up on the sound booth. Now you have to understand the thing about these shows is when you play, you know, when the band would start playing, the the crowd would go nuts, and you know people would start stage diving, they'd be slam dancing, whatever. <laughs> So the front of the stage is not where you want to be if you are a, you know, um, a easily bruised individual, shall we say. And <laughs> so, you know, I'll never forget, you know, I was glad that they got him up there because I certainly didn't want him in front of the stage, you know, because um, I didn't want him to get hurt or anything. And <laughs> I'll never forget the next, the next day at breakfast, he goes... He, you know, we're at breakfast, my mom's there, he walks in and he goes, you know, I'm, I'm there, I'm told that I gotta get up in the sound booth because might, I might get hurt, I don't know what they're talking about, and then they get on stage, they, get, they hit the first note, people are going nuts, they're jumping on stage, they're crawling all over each other, <laughs> my God, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like it was kind of funny and and then my mom goes well that sounds very interesting i think i would like to see this <laughs>